Reading code to try to find all the vulnerabilities in it is a time-consuming endeavor that requires a certain level of expertise and consequently could be error-prone, you know, given how experienced a particular vulnerability hunter is. Now, wouldn't it be nice if there were just tools that we could use in order to just find all the vulnerabilities for us? Well, there are, but, you know, this has to be taken with a grain of salt because if you think back to your computer science, uh, there's the halting problem that tells us that Program analysis to try to determine such a simple criteria of will the program halt or not is not actually feasible. So if that's not feasible, then finding much more complicated situation like vulnerabilities given completely unknown input is probably also an extremely difficult or computationally infeasible thing. So indeed, you know, static analysis tools do exist and they can be helpful, but you have to recognize their limitations. Now, these are called static analysis tools to differentiate them from dynamic analysis tools. So dynamic analysis is when you're actually running the code and analyzing what's happening, and static analysis is when you don't actually run the code and you try to figure out how it will behave. So the relevant marketing terms are static application security testing and source code analysis, apparently. I had to go look that up. I just call them static analysis tools. Now, if you work for a large tech company or someone that already has access to a static analysis tool, you should absolutely use it. You just, like I said, have to recognize that there are limitations. Most notably, they do tend to have a lot of false positives and false negatives. False positive is when they tell you something is a vulnerability, but it isn't actually. And false negative is when they do not detect a vulnerability that is actually there. So, you know, the fact of the matter is, if you were just going to sit around and read the code with your ACID goggles anyways, then of course it benefits you to start from the particular hits that a given sub static analysis tool may give you, right? It'll give you ins with the source code for places where there are potential errors. Typically, static analysis tools are going to find the things like attacker-controlled input coming in from environment variables or over the network or over the file system, and then they will be looking for these acid sinks, which are, you know, the things like mem copies, string copies, etc. So again, you should absolutely use it for what it's worth, but it's not always worth much. So uh, the government, NIST in, sorry, the U.S. government, NIST in particular, the National Institute for Standards and Technology, has run analysis of a variety of static analysis tools uh, many years, and the latest report that I was able to find was the 2018 one. Uh, and basically what you see when you look at these reports is that, you know, they look at certain simple, medium, or extremely complicated vulnerabilities, and then they evaluate a bunch of tools to say, did they catch it or did they miss it? Now, the NIST report is purposefully anonymizing which tools it is actually looking at. Uh, so basically they don't want to be seen as recommending or disrecommending any given tool. But, you know, universally, the conclusions of both, you know, NIST reports and NSA reports is that there's a whole lot of, you know, false positives. And generally speaking, uh, between different tools, there are, will oftentimes be sort of different finds. So essentially, they recommend, you know, using multiple tools, which are going to find multiple different vulnerabilities. But, um, but yeah, again, the point is just to make it clear to you that these are not a just put the code in and all the vulnerabilities will pop out. These are just like a way of accelerating the triage uh, that must necessarily occur uh, via human analysis. Now, as I mentioned before, the static analysis tools will generally have some pre-built in sources of tainted data, the ACID sources and the ACID sinks the tainted data sources, tainted data sinks. As a reminder, tainted data is the actual proper industry term and ACID is just a made up term I use for this class. So anyways, they have some default things for that. Um, but, you know, to my mind, customization of these things is key to actually getting good results out of them. In particular, you know, in my context, when I work in firmware security, you know, sure, they know about things like data read in from a socket, if it's literally a socket in the POSIX sense, but they don't know anything about the fact that data that I consider data tainted if it's being read in from NVRAM in UEFI or something like that. So, you know, it is required to actually customize these to get the best possible options, but even customization can be uh, particularly tricky and, you know, you work with the customer support to try to get things changed and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't and most of the time it doesn't in my experience. So, anyways, uh, the key thing is that, again, 
They're great for like triage and catching some easy bugs, right? Don't get me wrong. There's absolutely nothing wrong with getting those easy wins by, you know, taking and looking at their output, sorting out the false positives, and then, you know, addressing any of the things they find. But, you know, you have to recognize that there's uh, false positives, false negatives. A lot of times false negatives around interprocedural analysis, meaning they can't properly track the acid going into functions and coming out of functions. So, um, you know, it's the kind of thing where I do not recommend necessarily that a development team go off and try to work with the vendor to, to customize it and stuff like that. That's probably usually something more where you would want the security team, if you have one, to, uh, you know, first of all, do the first order triage of saying, you know, let's get rid of any obvious false positives. And then, you know, they can hand you the, uh, the, the possible false, uh, sorry, positive, possible true positives, uh, which then, you know, a developer could evaluate.